Hey guys, what is going on? Carter here. I've got a follow-up video to my hard use and abuse test of the Adamus 275 right here. I have kind of found um, a new level of respect for this knife after that testing and after kind of playing with it. Now, I've had this model in the past. I think I've had two of them, an auto version and a manual version. Um, I always kind of liked them off the bat, but then I end up selling them not really liking them for some reason, but I've kind of found new interest in this knife. Um, and part of it has to do with the testing. It performed phenomenally. I cannot believe how well it did. And I'll get into detail and kind of show you a little bit more on uh, the damage and stuff that it took. But I put this thing through hell. Uh, hopefully it comes across in the video. I know a lot of the times like spine whacking and stabbing, uh, it doesn't seem as aggressive when you watch it in the video as when you're actually doing it. Um, when you're taking a knife and you're doing spine wax, it feels like you're hitting it so hard um, and so loud. And then when you go and check the video, it looks like you're just kind of tapping it. So I guarantee you guys, if you're thinking that I went light on it, I did not. I went really hard on it. Um, I beat the crap out of this thing. And I was extremely impressed with how this D2 handled all the abuse and everything else. Now, uh, as I mentioned in the video, this is not a new knife. This is not a fresh out of the box, fresh as a daisy knife. This thing, you can see the pocket clip wear. That is not from my testing. That is from it being carried. And you can see the wear on this thumb stud right here. That is from the thousands of times that this thing has been opened and closed in other people's hands. I bought this used. Um, and it came to me in quite used condition. In fact, some of these screws, I tried to take it apart to give it a good cleaning. Uh, a lot of these screws are stripped out. So I got some new ones on the way from Benchmade and I'm going to slot um, this one in particular. I'm gonna have to slot this one because uh, you need to get that out in order to get the scale off to access stuff. I'm gonna slot it, remove it, replace it, get in there and clean it. I did notice it has some rust inside of between the G10 and the steel here. Uh, for what I could see when I kind of pried it apart a little bit. So I'm going to take it apart, get it cleaned up, put some wax in there, um, you know, get it all nice and spiffy after everything I did to it. Uh, part of the reason I did the test like that is because of its kind of used condition. And I thought, hey, you know, this is a hard use knife. It's the epitome of a hard use knife. Let's put it through some testing. Let's see what it can do. It's been a while. It's definitely not, uh, you know, I got it in a trade. It's not a knife that I can turn around and sell for a lot of money. It had a lot of use, had marks on the blade. I know it had been to Benchmade at least once for sharpening. And uh, so I went ahead and did the testing and it performed phenomenally. There's still no blade play in this thing. It is rock solid. But more importantly and more impressively is how well the blade held up to all the abuse I put it through. If we can get some... Some focus here. My camera struggles. There, oh, see, it's it has a hard time. There we go. So you can see. I don't want to mess it up. So right there, you can see the flecking and the finish right there. So here is where I was doing most of my most impressively the striking on the blade against that can, uh, that large paint can. I was hitting this thing so hard with that large paint can. Uh, you can see all the marks in it. It is crazy. And see how that edge is just fine? There is no chips. And I have sharpened it. Um, uh, let me say that this is not after I did the testing. This is after I sharpened it. But this is a fast sharp job. This is not a full pro reprofile sitting there grinding on the thing to get a bunch of chips out. This is my wife's going to be home in 30 minutes. I'm going to hurry up and sharpen this thing as quick as I can. Um, because I've got to get the kids to bed and I don't want to spend all night doing it. Uh, this is a regular sharpening job. This is not a reprofile job. This is what I would do. I mean, there's a little bit of reprofiling just because I'm coming off a factory edge. Um, so the angle here, because I'm clamped back here, um, is always going to be a little more acute of an angle. So there is some reprofiling, but I didn't remove uh, a ton of material, especially from the edge. The only lasting damage is on the very tip. There is still a little bit of chipping um, from the stabbing. I think particularly the, the chicken wire is what kind of really did it. Uh, you can see the, the coating held up very well. 
It was in pretty good condition. By regular photographs, it would have looked perfectly black. There was a few wear marks on it before I started, uh, but you can see how some of it's worn off there. It's got a lot more character now, as you can see. But the Cerakote coating held up phenomenally well. I was very impressed with that. Um, of course, the blade, though, is the most, most impressive thing. The D2 is outstanding. Um, and of course, you know, this is a very thick edge. This is not a slicer knife. Um, so, you know, this is a strong edge just by design. Very thick stock. Um, it's all flat right here and then it's flat ground right here. Uh, so you've got quite a bit of thickness behind this edge. And the factory secondary bevel was pretty obtuse. So it is ground to handle. Well, not really handle that kind of abuse, but it is ground for that kind of thing somewhat in mind. Uh, this is not a paper slicer by any means, uh, just blade design wise and grind grind as well as how it was uh, sharpened. It's not meant to slice through tomatoes. It is kind of a hard use design and it held up extremely, extremely well. Um, I've been carrying this uh, uh, quite a bit lately just because of how impressed I was with how it performed. Um, and it also brings to light, you know, a lot of people, I don't want to bash on striders, but... Um, a lot of people think Striders have these amazing warranties and you can just beat the crap out of them and send them in. And that's kind of true, uh, but it's not quite as amazing as people think it is. Uh, actually, Benchmade seems to have the best warranty. Uh, they have like $30 blade replacements. They will send you screws and pocket clips free of charge. They will handle just about any fixes you can throw at them. And if they do charge you, it's very inexpensive. And the, you don't hear about it because most of their clientele are regular people. They're not hanging out on forums talking about how they sent their benchmate in for service, like uh, Strider guys and Emerson guys are. Um, they are, you know, military personnel, regular people, use their knives. If they have a problem, they send it in, they get it taken care of, and they don't log into USN or Blade Forums and start a picture thread all about it. They get their knife back and they carry on. And, you know, maybe they tell their buddy about how awesome Benchmade is, uh, but that's about it. Uh, but Benchmade has an amazing warranty. And talk about hard use. I would say if you want to beat the crap out of a knife, this would be the one to do it. Uh, you could get two or three of these for the price of a Strider, and it will cost you less, and you'll get your knife back way quicker if you have problems with it and need to send it in for work, uh, whether it's your own fault or theirs. Uh, Benchmade really is a great company, and they're they're kind of overlooked in terms of uh, their their warranty, in my opinion. It really outshines a lot of these companies that claim to have these amazing, amazing warranties. Uh, but then when you look into it, it's it, it seems like it's not really the case. But that's a different video. I went off on a tangent. Very surprised with how this thing performed. Uh, really like it. It's a great knife. I'd absolutely recommend picking one up. I've got full reviews on this out there. Um, obviously, I'm looking at it kind of in a more kindly light now that I have in the past. You know, it's not a perfect EDC knife. It's heavy. It's very thick. Um, you know, so you got to keep all that in mind. I'm not saying it's a perfect knife, uh, but in terms of hard use, I mean, this is the epitome of a hard use knife, if that's what you're after. All right, guys, that's it. Just wanted to give you a follow-up on the performance of this Adamus, how well it did. Look at that edge. I cannot believe how this edge cleaned up. <laughs> I mean, this was a quick sharpening job. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, give me a comment. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you think about my original testing video. Oh, and that'll be uh, linked in the description, hopefully, if I remember, if you want to check that out. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do that. I would like to do it with other knives, but, you know, I can't really afford it. I can't beat the crap out of every single knife because a lot of them I'm going to end up having to resell to fund other projects. But that's neither here nor there. You guys take it easy. I'm out of here.